For the second question, for the second question, it says if a is not equal to b, and we have the equation one over x plus one over a is equal to one over b, then x is equal to what? Well, as you can see, we are trying to solve an equation that involves fractions. So this is what we are going to do. First, we are going to figure out what's the lowest common denominator for x, a, and b, and then we are going to multiply through this equation by the LCD, the lowest common denominator, so that we can get rid of the fraction. And let me show you how we can do that. And to do so, let me first write down this equation right here. But then this time, let me write down 1 over x and then leave a space right here. And then we'll put down a plus. And then we have the 1 over a. And same thing, leave a space. And then we put down the equal sign. At the end, we write down the 1 over b. And at the end, you should have plenty of space right here, right? All right. So let's talk about what is the lowest common denominator for these fractions. Well, x, a, and b, they are all different. So in this case, the lowest common denominator is just x times a times b. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to multiply all these terms by x, a, and b. And you see why that I left all this space right here, right? So multiply x, a, b, x, a, b, and then x, a, b. Well, what good does this do? As you can see for the first part, x and x cancel out, right? So we will just have 1 times a, b, that's just a times b. And then we add it with, for the second part right here, this a and this a cancelled out. And we will have 1 times x times b, which is x, b. And then this is equal to, at the end, we have this b and that b cancel each other out. And then we have 1 times x times a, which is just x, a. So you see, whenever we have an equation with fractions, just look for the lowest common denominator first, and then multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, so that we will end up with an equation with no fractions. That will be the strategy. And now we still have to solve for x, and this is what we are going to do. You see that x, are, you see that x is on both sides, right? We have the x. We see that we have the x's on both sides. So we are going to first collect all the x together, and then we put everything else that we don't want onto the other side. And let me show you how we can do that. Well, we see that we have x's on both sides, right? So we are going to first collect the x's together on one side, and then everything else that has no x onto the other side. As you can see from the left-hand side, we have this has no x, and this has the x times b, right? So let me subtract x, b on both sides. This way, you see that all the x's will be on the right hand side. So you see, we will end up with a, b is equal to x, a minus x, b. And now what can we do? Well, if you focus on the right hand side, both of these terms have x. Let me color this in red. So what we're going to do is we can factor it out. Let's factor out that x, and then you will have a minus b left. And on the left hand side, it stays the same. So we have the a b is equal to that. At the very end, you see this is x times parentheses a minus b. We can just divide both sides by a minus b. This way, the a minus b will cancel each other out, and then we will end up the x on one side by itself. And then this is equal to a times b over a minus b. So that's what x is. And as you can see, a, b over a minus b, that's choice E right here for the answer. That's it. That's it.